guys. This video is going to go over applications of sinusoidal functions and basically what that means is we're going to take a word problem, a very practical word problem, and we're going to turn it into a cos and sine equation and even more so a graph and we're going to analyze it. To be able to do these sinusoidal functions you do need a calculator. If you have a TI-84 at home, great, it'll work. If you have a TI Inspire, that's even better because remember that's what we're using in class. Um, and because of that reason, I know several of y'all don't have Inspires, that's okay. Um, we're actually going to hold off on that first part um, to be done in class so you can actually practice with the Inspire and how to plug in these numbers, where to plug them in all, and all of that kind of stuff. So I'm going to jump right into the word problem. Number one on page 19 is talking about a Ferris wheel. Take a minute to go ahead and read that yourself. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, start highlighting information that we have. So it says that we're on a Ferris wheel, and that Ferris wheel obviously goes um, goes around several times. And it says that your distance varies from the ground. I'm sorry, from the ground varies sinusoidally with time. So you have two things: you have distance, and you have time that we're working with. Sinusoidally, just so you know, basically just means repeatedly. So as you know, a Ferris wheel continues to go up and or around and around until, of course, the time is up. Um, so uh, there's, that's what that means. Now it says, you are in the last seat filled on the Ferris wheel, and the Ferris wheel starts immediately. Let t be the number of seconds that has elapsed elapsed since the Ferris wheel started. So we're going to go ahead and draw a coordinate plane, but it's going to look more like um, something that we can actually graph on just like this, where my x-axis represents time in seconds, and my y-axis represents distance, uh, but I'm going to note that as h of t to represent height with respect to time. Okay, so now let's get into the meat of it. So it says that it takes you three seconds to reach the top, which is 43 feet above the ground. Now, because we have height, technically that height is above ground, and actually this x-axis we can use to represent the ground in this case. So what, what I've just highlighted actually gives you your very first point. It says the height uh, that you reach is 43 feet all the way up here. And that's above ground, and it says it takes three seconds to get there. So if we know this is when time is zero, it takes three seconds to go to get there. So I'm just going to show three seconds right there. That's actually our first point. So there you go. And I'm not really going to worry about a scale um, so much. It's just a matter of putting numbers down and in the correct spots or um, as accurately as you can. Okay, now it says that the... Ferris wheel actually makes a revolution every eight seconds. What that means is, if you think about a, uh, about a Ferris wheel, it takes eight seconds to get back to the very top from here. So right now, if your high point is at three, then eight seconds later, which would be at 11 seconds, you're going to be back at that same place, at that same height. So let me actually write that down here so that we know when we're referring back, period is actually eight seconds. Because remember, a revolution is basically how long it takes to complete one pattern. And so in this case, it is eight. So we'll come back to that. And then it tells you that the diameter of the wheel is 40 feet. Now, we really have to think about that because if you, the highest you can go is 43 feet, but the Ferris wheel itself is 40 feet. What that tells you is that the lowest you will go then is three. And that makes sense too, because the Ferris wheel uh, has to move and has to go around and around, so it can't touch the ground. It's gonna actually, in this case, be three feet above ground. So keep that in mind. Now what we need to do is we need to actually make this into a graph. So these are the only points that we can actually figure out. What we need to do now is just kind of understand what's been given and figure out the other points to give us a cosine or a sine graph. So I know if these are my uh, if these are my high points and this is actually one entire period, that means the rest of my points are going to fit in this section. 
So if I know this is a high point, this is a high point, and it takes eight seconds to get from one point to the other, then halfway will be right here uh, in terms of the x-axis. And so that's going to be, because the entire time is eight seconds, four seconds would be directly in the middle. And so four seconds away from three and away from 11 will be seven. So I know that if these are my high points and directly in the middle should be my low point, which we said is at three. So now I, I know my high points, I know my low points. I need to go back and figure out my mid points, my center line. So now I have to come over to my, uh, my, my height. So if I know from 43 to three, the total distance there is my diameter, it's 40, then half of that, half of that height, a half of 40 feet is 20 feet. So from 43 down 20 should give us 23, which is where our midpoint and our center line should be. So now I have to go here to find, I know my y value, my midpoint for my y value is gonna be at 23, but now for my x's, I need to go between three and seven seconds and I don't really need to find the numbers on that, that's not really gonna help me, but just so I know where it's at. And between seven and 11, which will be about there. So now I have my entire pattern. Let me go ahead and connect those dots and show also that it does continue. So I'm just gonna do that on both sides. And so now this looks like a sine or cosine curve. Here's the thing, for these sinusoidal functions, we're going to recognize them as cosine curves every single time. These sinusoidal functions are always going to be cos curves, so when we, uh, or cos equations. So when we write down the equation, we're actually gonna write it down as a cosine equation. But before I do that, let's actually go back to part B. It says, what is the lowest you go as the Ferris wheel turns? And we already talked about this. The lowest we can go is three feet above ground. And the reason for that is, for obvious reasons, we can't, on a Ferris wheel, we can't touch the ground as it's moving. It won't work that way. But even more so, it says, why is this number greater than zero? Um, we would say that the highest sense, the highest point, or the height, the height of the, Ferris wheel is going to reach 43, and you know your diameter is 40 feet, then the difference between them is exactly how, how above ground you will be, three feet. There we go. Now part C says write an equation for this function. So like we said, we'll get, we're gonna write this as a cosine. Let me list out all of the values that we have to fill in uh, on this equation, so you have your A, B, C, and D values, all the transformations. So if I look back at my graph, I know some of the things I've already talked about. So A, remember, is your amplitude. It's the distance from the highest point to the center line. I already said my center line is at 23, so that distance from there is actually 20, and we already said that. So amplitude is 20, so I'll go ahead and put that into my equation right over here in front of cos. Now the next thing is your B value. Remember, it's hard to find the B value based on your graph itself. However, it's easy if you can find the period and then go based on that. So I know the period is actually eight seconds. It told me that. So now I'm just gonna come off to the side and say, I know that period is two pi over B, and I know the period in this case is actually eight. I can use that to find my B value. So now I'm gonna put that eight over one and cross multiply to give me eight B equals two pi. Now I'm gonna divide by eight to give me B equals two pi over eight or pi over four. So pi over four is your B value. And you're probably thinking, why is your B value in terms of pi? Well, the reason for that is because your X axis is not in terms of pi. So typically, your X values are in terms of pi or the B, it's either or. So in this case, because our X values are actually in terms of seconds in decimal form, our B value will now have a pi in it. So it's either or. 
Now to continue, C is your phase shift. And because we're calling this a cos function, remember cos starts on the y-axis as a with a high point. And I know I don't have a high point there because our high point, our nearest high point, is actually right over there. It's three seconds away. So I'm gonna say C is actually three seconds away. So three will be your C value. And because I'm going to the right, I'm gonna write down minus three, just like that. And lastly, the D value is gonna be based on your center line, remember? So the center line, my midpoints are at 23, which tells me that the D value itself is positive 23 because we've gone up 23 feet. So there's your equation. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug it into the calculator to find for part D, it says find your height at these given times. So we're on the Inspire, if you have an Inspire, pull it out. If you have a TI-84, um, it'll work too. So we're going to go to Graph, which we haven't used yet in class, um, but we will go back over this in class, so don't worry if you don't have one in front of you. Okay, so since I'm looking for height, I know that I'm looking for a Y value, so what is Y? when time, when x is given. Before that, of course, I do need to plug it into the, to plug the equation in. So I'm gonna hit tab until that shows up and type in 20 cos of open parenthesis pi over four, close parenthesis, open parenthesis again. And I'm gonna write x minus three, close parenthesis, and shift over to the right and plus 23. And when I hit enter, it'll show me my graph. Notice that it is a little off. What I'm gonna have to do is go to menu, go down to window, and I'm gonna go down to zoom fit. That way it shoots it right uh, exactly where I need it to be. So there you go, there's my graph. And you can always check back and make sure you have the same graph, and we do. Okay, so now, like we said, we're looking for y when x is six. So this is pretty easy. We just have to remember the steps a little bit. So we're gonna go to menu. We're gonna go down to trace, hit graph trace, enter on that. And it gives you an option to type. I don't know if you can see it on, on the screen, but because I know my time is six, I'm gonna type in six, hit enter, and it goes exactly to when x is six to give you a height of 8.86. And that's the height when time is six seconds. Okay, the next one it says, what about 13 over three seconds? So again, we're gonna go to menu, go down to trace, graph trace, hit 13 divided by three, hit enter, and it gives me 33 feet as a y value. And the next one says, what about time when uh, time is zero? So again, I'm gonna hit menu, trace, graph trace, and I'm gonna type zero, enter, and it gives me 8.8 .8 seconds, or I'm sorry, feet again. So there you go. The last question says, what is the value of t, what is, in other words, what is x, the second time you are 18 feet above ground? So 18 feet will represent your y value. So we know 18 is your y. We don't know x, um, so we're gonna have to actually do this a different way. So now, here's my graph. If I know y is 18, I'm gonna go to, actually I'm gonna hit tab so that I'm able to type in another equation, and actually my equation is given to me, 18. So I'm gonna type in 18 right over there, hit enter, and it'll graph you a line at 18. And I'm looking for, if you read carefully, it says what is the time, the second time though. So y-axis is going to represent when you start time, so we really just care about the positive, not the negative, ignore the negative side. So that intersection, that first intersection right there is actually the first time you're at 
18 feet above ground. We want the second time, so we want that intersection right there. So I'm going to go to Menu, go down to Analyze Graph. I want the intersection, so I'm going to hit Enter on that. And then it's asking you what's the lower bound. So where exactly do you want your intersection? Which intersection do you want? So I'm going to hit Enter a little bit to the left of that intersection. And then it says what's your upper bound. So I'm going to go to the right side of that a little bit. And hit Enter on the right side of that point. And so it, then it tells me, well, is this the intersection that you wanted? And it is. It gives me, let's see if I can get it to work. There you go. It gives me 5.32, and that's seconds when it's the second time you're 18 feet above ground. There you go. Okay. So there's your Ferris wheel problem. On page 20, you have another problem and again go ahead and pause the video go ahead and read it I'm gonna go jump right in to the problem itself it says that you have uh, Mark Twain who sat on the deck of a steamboat as the paddle wheel turned he noticed a dead fish caught on one of the paddles we have um, as the the wheel turned distance your D value um, or noted by D that the fish from the water surface was a sinusoidal function of time. So what that means is we have our coordinate planes that we can get graph on. Where again, because it says distance, we're going to call our y-axis d of t distance with respect to time, where time is your x-axis. And because it's in seconds, I'm going to call that seconds, time in seconds. Okay, so let's go into the information that's given. It says, when the stopwatch read four seconds, the fish was at its highest 16 feet above water surface. So just like the previous problem, the x-axis will now represent the water's surface, so keep that in mind. And so 16 feet above ground is the highest, so here's 16. It took four seconds to reach that, so here's four, and so that gives you your very first point. And then it says it took another eight seconds to reach that height again. Another 10 seconds to reach that height again. So 10 seconds after four would be 14 seconds to reach that height again. So again, what that tells you is that this is how long it takes to finish one pattern. So again, the period then is 10 seconds. So now I need to figure out my other points. It says, first of all, the diameter of the wheel itself is 18 feet. So if I know that I started up here, the height is at 16. If I know the diameter is 18 feet, what that means is that the lowest your paddle um, will go is two feet under water. So about here, let's mark that as negative two. And so my lowest will be directly between four and 14, which is at nine, right over there, negative two. Okay, and just like we did for the previous problem, we do need our midpoints again. So. If I know that the entire distance is 18 feet on the y values, then half of that will be 9 feet. The radius will be 9, but I need to go down from 16, 9, which will be at 7 feet. So I know my midpoints will be at 7 feet at these times right over here. And again, I don't really care so much about the values themselves, I just need those points there. So now if I make that into a graph, just like that, and show that it continues, then this is what I have, and I'm ready to go. And again, this is your center line. Okay, so now write an equation. So again, we're going to call this a cosine curve, just like we said um, we're going to do with all of these. And I want A, I want B, C, and D. Now A, we just mentioned, is the distance from your center line to the highest point, which we said is 9 feet, because 
total distance was 18, so cut that in half. And that's 9, so I'm going to put that in as my amplitude. B is based on the period. So period equals 2 pi over B. And so I know my period is 10, so 10 equals 2 pi over B. Put the 10 over 1. Cross multiply to give you 10B equals 2 pi. And so B is going to end up giving you pi over 5. So B is pi over 5. Now phase shift. Again, because we're calling it a cosine curve, we need to look out for that high point. That high point is actually 4 seconds away from the Y axis. So we're going to say C is 4 to the right, and so we're going to write down a minus 4 to represent that. And lastly, D is going to be where your center line is exactly. So at 7, and because we've gone up 7, there you go, there's your equation. So again, on your calculator, go ahead and type that in. So I'm going to type in my equation, 9 cos of pi over 5, x minus 4 plus 7, okay? So now again I'm going to go to zoom fit, which is option A. There we go. Okay, now again, I want time is five seconds. So I'm going to go to menu, go down to trace, graph trace. Time is five seconds. So hit five, enter, and it gives me my height of 14.3 feet. Okay, the next one, time is 17 seconds. So menu, trace, graph trace. 17, enter, and you have 4.22 feet. Oops, feet. Okay, now it says for part D, give one time in seconds. So we're really looking for X. What is X? When the fish is coming out of the water. Okay, so when it's coming out of the water, remember our water surface is the the x-axis when y equals 0. So we're going to go to our graph and hit tab so you're able to type that in y equals 0. So I'm going to type in 0, enter, and there's my line at y equals 0. I want the intersection and I want one, any one of the times, any one. So I'm going to go to, uh, I want to find the intersection. So I'm going to go to menu, go down to analyze graph, intersection, and let me actually go over here to this intersection. I'll just try to find that first inter that first intersection right there. So there's my lower bound, here's my upper bound, and there's my intersection at, let's see if y'all, I don't know if y'all can see this, but when y is 0, x, it says, is 7.92 seconds, and there you go. Number three, on page 20, we're actually going to do tomorrow in class. And so we'll stop there. Thanks, guys.